one last time I can feel that power in my head The beat of the drums rushing through my skin Leicester at the Morningside Arena, where the riders looking to finish strong as we roll towards the playoffs take on the Gladiators, who have one eye on next week's trophy final. A win for Leicester ties the season series and strengthens their grip on that top three playoff berth. Very good evening to you. Welcome to the Friday Night Basketball here on Sky Sports. Drew Lasker, Kieran Achara, present and correct. Good to see you both. And for Leicester, it's all about as high a seed as possible, isn't it now? Because the title is surely gone. Yeah, it's a foregone conclusion that it's the London Lions title to be lost. But it's about the playoffs now. It's a fresh start for everybody. You just got to make sure you get in, but you got to make sure you're playing your best basketball as well. What about the Caledonia Gladiators? Sunday, the biggest game in this uh, for years for this franchise, that's got to be on their minds a little bit tonight, isn't it? I'm, I'm sure they say that it, it won't be, but it clearly will be. It, it has to be. It's a, it's a humongous game in Glasgow, and they just announced their arena as well, so there's been a lot of media behind that. So it's really important that they stay kind of like even keeled and focus on this game and, and put on a good performance. Let's drill down a little bit more on that, because you've played in a number of big finals. The week of, coaches will tell you, players will tell the media, we're not thinking about it, we're just concentrating on what's in front of us, but you must be thinking about it a little bit, right? Well, it's like when you got that holiday booked on Friday, but you got to work all week. You're talking about that holiday every day at work, so of course these guys are. Does it give an edge to Caledonia tonight, given the finals next Sunday? Because starting five are going to want to cement their place in the starting five. The guys on the bench are going to want to show Gareth that they deserve a spot to start in the big five. You know, I, I like to look at it a little bit differently. I, I, I'm, I'm focusing on putting on a good team performance against a really strong Leicester Riders to put them in good stead for that game against Cheshire Phoenix. Well, make sure you join us for that game against Cheshire Phoenix. Trophy final day is next Sunday, the 26th of March. First up, the WBBL game. London's opponents will be confirmed tomorrow. Newcastle facing Leicester in the second semi-final, and that is followed by the BBL final. Cheshire looking to retain their trophy against Caledonia. We're on air from 12.30 in Sky Sports Action and Sky Sports Mix. Now, as far as the league is concerned, well, after three losses on the bounce, the Gladiators got back on the winning trail last Sunday against Manchester. They're sitting in the top five. The Riders also come into this off the back of a win to keep that second-place battle with Bristol very much alive. As Drew said, seemingly no chance of anyone spoiling the Lions' march to the title. Although it's going to be a tight finish for those last two playoff spots. And Drew, Newcastle, just one win in six for them. Can they put a run together and get back in the mix, do you think? Well, I spoke to Darius Defoe this week, and he told me that the magic number was seven. So I got off the phone encouraged until I went back and looked at the schedule. Three out of their last ten games were against the London Lions. And one game is here, by the way, with the Leicester Riders never lose so i don't know how to tell him but it ain't looking too good uh, drew's not buying so is, that, is that you saying no then i is didn't that... say that <laughs> a long-winded way of drew saying no i think we also pointed out as we were talking about this pre-game ever since drew lasker hung him up newcastle have been on till i think there might be some kind of connection there yeah and i always say that leaders should leave a legacy you know and uh, he's you know i'll let, I'll let the, the record stand for itself you know? all right let's uh, key in on tonight's game in a little bit more detail starting with the Leicester Riders, one of the strongest rosters once again in the BBL. Mark Loving having a big season. Patrick Whelan, the cornerstone of this offense. Another stellar year for him. Carrington Love, one of the newest signings in the backcourt. He's playing alongside seasoned BBL pros like Zach Jackson, Connor Washington, 
and Darian Nelson Henry in the mix as well. And at 88 points per game, they're second only to Manchester in scoring. So racking up the points hasn't been a problem for the Riders. Are you surprised, Drew, at how fluent their offense has been this season post Gino Crandall? Uh, to a certain extent, they're figuring out different ways to get it done. They still got great shooting ability. The only thing I feel like they lost with the lack of Geno is the playmaking ability, but everything else is in standing order. All right, Darian Nelson Henry, a player I mentioned a moment ago, he's the skipper. And Drew, he's so instrumental at both ends of the court. He gets the heavy lifting done, doesn't he? Yeah, and, and it hasn't been said much, but he's actually having a down year when you look at his field goal percentage and scoring. And actually Sunday, he scored his most points since... December 3rd, and that's the version of Nelson Henry that the Riders need if they're going to go places in the playoffs. Mark Loving is so versatile, isn't he? Offensively, he just has so many different angles, so many different tricks, and he's clearly so consistent with it. So consistent, and you know, he, he goes about it with a level of calmness. You know, haircut or not, he's still been able to produce, and that's the thing for me. He's got such a nice shot. It's so pretty to watch, which frees him up to be able to attack the rack as well. And his development is something you've noted year on year. Drew, how has his game progressed? You could tell that he's just becoming more mature, like Kieran said, that I'm impressed about the control. He don't allow a defense to speed him up. He's going to get what he wants to get. Zach Jackson, at the cup final, Kieran, you said he epitomizes everything the riders stand for. How so? He's a tough-nosed player who d doesn't care about himself. He cares about the team. And I think you know, he always is about business. He's very professional in the way he does things. But he's, he's willing to play both ends of the court as well. So that's why he epitomizes everything that Leicester Ryder stands for. Kimball McKenzie's got to come close to that accolade. He's having a brilliant season. Team GB call-up. What has changed in his game this year, Drew, that's enabled that level up? A guy named Gino Crandell, which has given him <laughs> opportunity. And you can see it. Like, he has a bounce in his step. He's playing with confidence and he's showing you why he scores 17 a game in college okay caledonia only nine made the trip down for them tonight including david sloan their standout player this season no ali fraser how big a loss is that going to be for them tonight you know what they've, they've kind of been using them limited since he's returned you know bringing in ali Odzic and the likes of you know taffy stepping up so it's, it's not a big loss but it's it's you know he's still another body who made a big difference you look at the megawatt stars on the Lions or the Giants, and as we've just seen the season BBL names on the Riders, the Gladiators roster kind of goes under the radar a bit. Not necessarily those high-profile names, and it's proving to be uh, one of the most effective in the BBL right now. David Sloan, I think it's fair to say, is their standout player of the season in the top five scorers in the BBL. So unsurprisingly, Kieran, we're expecting him to feature heavily tonight. And that's the hope. You know, he, he slipped off the, uh, the last couple of weeks but really picked it back up against Manchester there, playing at a real high level. Patrick Tappe is lethal in the paint, shooting at a 64% clip from the field, which is the very best in the BBL right now. I really love his game, and I think he's improved as the season's progressed as well. He's really kind of staked up to that starting role at, at, at times. A lot more efficient scorer, and like, again, playing at both ends of the court. Played some college ball at Duke as well. So impressive heritage. Princeton Onwas, what does he bring to this Caledonia offense, Drew? He's the biggest piece of the puzzle to this team. He has the highest plus minus, and he's the only guy that can affect the game without scoring on the Gladiators. He's been a great season head for this team. Al Dorham is a newer signing, came in to Caledonia in early early 2023 to strengthen the backcourt. How's he looked since he's landed, Kieran? I've really liked him as well. You know, I, I think it's a tough tough ass to come in during the season, but he's really stepped up, had a massive game against Manchester last week, so yeah, really make a massive impact for the Gladiators. How big a disadvantage is the fact that they're coming here short stacked tonight? I, you know, it's you know, losing a couple of players. I think they've started to find their rhythm. They've kind of been going with about an eight, nine man roster anyway. So I, I, I don't think I make much of a difference. All right. Well, a little bit earlier on, Drew caught up with Gareth Murray, Caledonia's head coach, and Rob Padanostro, the Riders' head honcho, to get their perspective on tonight's game. Coach, you never know, but league title looking unlikely with 11 games remaining. What's the team's focus? To win as many games as we can, like it is every year. Uh, we are not a team that ever gets hung up on standings or where we're at until the end. Um, so, you know, we want to win games and we want to play better. And we want to get healthier. Well, this is your most losses since the 18-19 season. Do you chalk this down to a down year or is the BBL tougher? 
Uh, you know, I think the BBL is tougher. I think, um, you know, we've had a lot of uh, injuries as well that have impacted, but certainly the league is tougher. I think when you look at it, we have the second best overall record in the league, I think. We got some Bristol right there. So, all in all, you know, we know the team that has the best record. They're pretty good. So, um, you know, I think for us, I think we just got to keep going, keep growing. And, again, I keep talking about it. It's, it's a health. Going, going into the playoffs, going into the end of the season, you want to be as healthy as you can. And after the Eagles lost last week, there was a defensive intervention amongst your group. What was the solution from that team meeting? Well, look, we um, I thought first half of defense was fine against the Eagles. Second half, it was poor. I thought uh, Sunday versus the Eagles, we definitely came out and played better on defense. I think we do that every week. Is you know, we analyze the video, we find out which way we can go and what we can do better. And I thought that uh, defense was was important for that Sunday game, and it was a good win for us. And a win tonight evens the season series with Caledonia. Your thoughts on the matchup? They're good, yeah. They got a lot of talent. I think, um, you know, we haven't seen Farrow yet or Durham, the new guard, you know, but um, every time we played them, we respect their talent. They're real fast in the open floor. I think it's important for us to make sure that we get back on defense early and that we are in those gaps because they got guys that can go by you and get to the basket. Your first as coach, a huge achievement making it to next weekend's trophy finals. What's the mood in the camp? Um, yeah, so we've been in a good mood. Um, we've lost a couple of games on the road now, so we're trying to build that confidence. Um, we had a good home win last week against Manchester, but it's about playing uh, consistent basketball for 40 minutes. We know we can play well for, for large spells, but it's about being that for the whole, the whole game. And speaking of the road, only winners of three out of 14. Where can you point the finger on those struggles? Um, I think recently it's been a slow start to games. Um, teams have jumped on us early, built that confidence on their home court. Um, we've played good basketball f following that start, but um, it's important for us to get a good start. Um, any team we're playing against, but I think it's definitely the start of the games that's really hurt us in the last few weeks. And with recent announcements, the club has big aspirations. How important is it for you and for Scottish basketball? Yeah, it's a huge, huge announcement for us. It's a big investment to the club. Um, shows where we want to be in the next few years. Having our own arena is, is important to continue to grow in the, the new BBL, as we want to say. All these teams are getting their own arenas. We have to be part of that as well. So um, it's a huge thing for, for Scottish basketball, but especially Caledonia Gladiators. And focusing on tonight, what do you need to do in order to get a win against the Riders here? Um, once again, don't give a team's confidence at the beginning of the game. Uh, we got to play every possession with Leicester. They know they can get on runs and we can't have any droughts and we got to play defense. We can't have too many breakdowns on defense. Now, Drew Lasker, I'm going to hazard a guess here. Have you been to see Creed 3 at the cinema this week? Because <laughs> you were stepping up to go to front battle Ostro there and playing with fire, asking some serious questions. That's a dangerous game. Like I said, it's the meat and potatoes of the season. The fans don't want garlic bread. They want steak, and i got to give it to them. He certainly delivered on that. Gareth Murray's had a brilliant year, hasn't he? And early on in his coaching career, if they go on and have a decent playoff run, and Lance and Silverware, has he escalated himself into that top tier of, of BBL coaches? He's definitely getting there, you know, and his, his willingness to improve as well. You know, it's, it's always hard as, as a coach. You know, he was a player coach beforehand, but now he's getting to be behind you know, the, on the sidelines and really wants to learn the game. We look at the team head to head and a couple of key things that jump out at us. Firstly, fast break points, which, uh, of course, is a key part of the Gladiators' MO, as we're seeing there, they rank number one in the BBL. How will the riders look to slow them down tonight, Kieran? Doing what riders do best, take good shots. You know, if they, if they take composed shots, the players know they can always get that defensive balance. All right, then, we are almost ready for showtime here in Leicester. The riders, the chaps, looking to finish out the regular season strong as they have their eyes firmly on the playoffs. That is the only silverware they can realistically land this season. The Gladiators, well, they've got the trophy final to contend with next Sunday. But first things first, they want to be playing strong and finishing strong in the League 2. So it is all to play for, and it's tipping off next. Whelan for three, top one. Oh, my goodness, what a shot! And Bailey. You're stepping his way to the hole. It's game time, let's go.
Basketball here on Sky Sports. Riders Gladiators about to tip off. So let's get right on over to Antro and Dan Rowley. Thank you very much, Nat. Yes, uh, it promises to be a great game here tonight. And the Riders and the uh, Gladiators have put on some battles this season. They have indeed. And it's usually home court advantage that have prevailed. So let's see how the Scottish fail at fair as they travel down to England. Well, Riders going with Nelson Henry, their captain at centre. They've rotated that this season. Well, he's coming off a big game. 16 points, nine rebounds against Newcastle Eagles. Let's see if he can bring that confidence into tonight. And in the other uh, centre spot, a, a man local to here, Ali Hodzic, uh, in the starting five for the uh, Gladiators. Well, this is the first and second points in the paint in the league. Ali Hodges is a guy that can finish in and around the basket at a really high rate. Well, the fives are out there, and we are ready to go here at the Morningside Arena. And it will be Ali Hodzic and Nelson Henry who jump it up. a little high but Nelson Henry wins the tip <laughs> McKenzie with that trademark elbow jumper he's so good at coming off that screen and he's not the tallest of players but he still is able to create enough space to get that shot off looks confidence to finish there's him in it around the screen Dropping it off to Ali Hodges underneath. She's got a little too deep. And Darren Nelson Henry size seemed to put him off there as well. You got two big bodies in there, both 6'10. Big bodies. Nelson Henry doing just enough there. Loving. Trying to find some room. Finds his captain instead. Shot clock getting low. Well, there was a noise there and Nelson Henry just stopped because he thought it was the shot clock buster but it wasn't oh, it was an inverted noise that, yeah. yeah everyone seemed to stop and it was like a mini timeout among players and then they carried on and Nelson Henry profited offensive foul ball by Ronaldo Hodzic for the moving screen oh, tough way to start here for Caledonian, here's the play before Ali Hodges stepping into that one. Good call from the referee there. Wow, I think that's the first one this season you said it's a good call. Yeah, they've got to get some right sometime, <laughs> haven't they, Dan, huh? Strong start from the referees today. Normally you're just blaming the guards, not, not the referees. Here's McKenzie driving to the hole. <laughs> Hard uh, foul there from Ali Hodzic. That's going to be his second in quick succession. And the last time they were here, they had foul trouble, the Gladiators, and they've got it again. And that's just Kimball McKenzie creating for himself and going right at the big guy, Ali Hodges, who pick up his second foul. And this is where, you know, the, the it becomes a lot more lighter. You know, it's Tape now has to come in. He's going to have to play extended minutes now in this first half, which he's more than capable of doing. There's no movement on the bench as yet, and uh, coach did say, uh, uh, sorry, Ali Hodges did say to his coach, I'm, I'm okay. And uh, we saw that in Manchester, where actually he got four fouls and then played his best basketball of the game. Well, this is an experienced vet who's played all over the world. He's featured for Team GP as well, and you know, he, he knows how to play basketball on two fouls. Oh, barely through the uh, lane and drops it out of bounds and Drew Lasker has joined us in commentary not a great start for the visitors here Drew yeah that's what I was concerned about this team is the two different teams when they're home and away and so far they're showing their colors here off to a slow start coach Garrett Murray said it was important for them to start off fast and things aren't looking great here with early fouls and a couple of turnovers well that one will go out of bounds for a Leicester possession and to your point drew they are 11 and 2 at home and they are 3 and 11 on the road only the two teams outside of the playoffs Newcastle and Surrey have a worse away record than the gladiators wow that just still to show they're really good at home but really not very good away it's it's as simple as that with that assessment and they're gonna have to figure out a way to start turning some of those road games into wins well the good thing for them is the trophy finals at home. <laughs> Indeed. <This is> true. <laughs> uh, 
Whelan getting all the way to the basket. That will have to defend better than that. Wow, terrible defense there. Don't <laughs> move from Patrick Whelan. I'm not taking away from that, but zero help. Sloan got a little slap on the wrist from Nelson Henry. Nice little strong, aggressive move by Sloan, a player in our league who arguably has one of the quickest first steps and a menace when it comes to getting in the paint. Really announced himself against Leicester early in the season with a 36-point game. And Hutchins backing down. And good footwork and finish for the first score of the game for Caledonia. It's a beautiful move there. Ali Hodges is so strong. You see him there pound his way to an advantageous position down low, and he's able to spin baseline and finish. Nice pass, but Whelan can't convert. It's tipped away for a Leicester ball. And since Whelan has returned from his injury, he's he hasn't been the same Patrick Whelan as we know and love. He's been struggling offensively and. He started this game getting some easy at the basket, and if the Leicester Riders are going to finish the season off strong, they need the Patrick Willen, who was the runner-up MVP last season. Well, that wasn't a great pass from him. It's Sloan, Ali Hodzic. Oh, he blows the layup, though. It's McKenzie. McKenzie goes up high, challenged by Omwas. End-to-end -end stop here. Drop back to Bailey who jams it in. And that's more like it going up strong and aggressive there by Bailey. And that's two layups still so far that the gladiators have missed. And you're talking about winning on the road. If you're going to have a chance, you got to finish those bunnies because you're not going to get many opportunities here. It is McKenzie with his pull up at the top of the key. They're really using that pick set by Nelson Henry there. They're looking to put Ali Hodges in the play as much as possible to start trying to get him to commit a foul. Here's Bailey in the corner for three. Rebound by Lovett. Back to Jackson, open for three. Back iron comes out to Omwas. Hot stop. He's stuck on eight now. Sloan lobs it up and in, and they've scored the last six points, Caledonia. Well, there's defensive breakdowns now from Leicester Roy. There's very little resistance there, and David Sloan sort of skipped his way in the middle there with a floater. He's a really good scorer, in case you haven't noticed. Averaging 18 points a game. This is his rookie year, and he's taken the BBL by storm. Well, Loving can't convert. Sloan looking for options. Takes it himself. Takes the foul. Can't convert, but he will shoot too. And that was uncharacteristic transition defense by the Leicester Riders. There were two guys that barely crossed half court there. Looking a little bit laggy. And on the flip side, the Gladiators have done a great job just to weather the storm as they head to the line of two and got an opportunity to tie this thing back up. Well, this is a very different Leicester Riders team this year. They are one of the more gifted offensive teams that we, we've seen in recent years. But, you know, when have you ever seen a Rob Patanasha team smack bang in the middle of points conceded? 82 points a game they're allowing this year. There's been numerous occasions where they just haven't been good enough defensively to, to win ball games. Hence why they've got eight losses this year so far. And if we reflect back to the very first game of the season when they played London Lions and how the Lions exploited their pick and roll, we thought it was an aberration and we thought it was just the Lions, but we've seen that all year long that weak side defense has just not been the same and they haven't been as connected. Well, let's just score the first eight. Caledonia have replied with the next eight. We are tied up here in Leicester as Durham checks into the game for the first time. David Sloan is just excellent too. Getting in the lane there, getting fouled, converting the free throws. He's that guy that they can go to. That one bubbles out. Menzies keeps it alive. That's going to be a foul on Sloan, I think. Just excellent work from Onwas, isn't it? You think that just on that second, Menzies did an excellent job of fighting for the ball. He's seven foot three, by the way. Onwas six eight, six seven, and. Just fighting for the ball there. And there's a reason why he has the highest plus minus on this team because he's willing to do plays like that, the little plays, the plays that every winning team needs. 
McKenzie, his jump shot doesn't go. Nothing dropping for Leicester right now. Loving sorts that out. Big shot for Mark Levin there, and it's Menzies who's, who's bringing that energy. He's fighting for those boards, getting those taps, and hands it up in the hands of Mark Levin, who knocks that one down gracefully. Down low to Ali Hodges. It's been in one way and the other. The hook is short, followed, but ring check by Bailey, who ends up on the floor. It's five on four right now. Kenzie, a long time to think about it, and it comes all the way to him. Whelan now with the three, and he knocks it down. And Gareth Murray wants to talk things over with his team. He calls a timeout, but Leicester two wide open threes, and they make the second one right there to force Gareth Murray into this uh, break of play. Well, the riders leading by six. Mark Loving just got on the scoreboard, and earlier he spoke to Drew. Mark, your second season, shooting percentage is up. Your scoring average has exploded. Where do you credit your improvement? Um, I credit it all to my teammates. Um, they put me in good positions, uh, screening well, and uh, I'm just able to knock down some shots um, or willing they go in. <laughs> well, last season was a tough act to follow after winning the trouble. What's been the challenges this year? Um, challenges this year, um, there's been injuries, uh, finding our chemistry, um, finding our rhythm. Uh, there's been times where we won multiple games in a row, lost multiple games in a row, but I feel like uh, it's building our chemistry and getting us ready for our end goal, which is trying to win the championship at the end. And as we hit this final stretch, what's been Coach Rob's message? Um, just being consistent, uh, bringing that same energy from beginning to the end, um, not, not really depending on who the opponent is, but putting our best foot forward. And there's six weeks left into the playoffs. What's the expectations amongst you guys? Um, I mean, our expectation is just to win. Um, any opponent, it uh, doesn't really matter who it is. Uh, we just want to go out there again, put our best foot forward, and, and get the dub. Thanks for your time, Mark. Appreciate it. Well, he's a guy who plays at his own pace. It's very hard to sort of shake him out of that. He's very languid in his style, but, boy, is he efficient. Yeah, absolutely. He's been his all of his numbers have gone up this season and it's no surprise that his all time favorite athlete is Kobe Bryant. So that's why you see the aggressiveness offensively. He can mix it up. He can get on the low post. Just having a great season for the Leicester Riders. Here's Sloan. Love guarding him having come fresh into the game. Sloan driving in, wheeling his way back out. Durham got uh, Whelan to bite on the head fake and he commits the foul. Yeah, it was a tough knock too from Durham to take from Whelan. The pump fake was, was that good. Whelan comes flying out there and full contact for Durham there on that one. Here's Ali Hodgic. I'm surprised that Dappe hasn't come into the game yet, given Ali Hodgic had two early fouls. Sloan short on the uh, first one. Menzies has it, but knocked away by Bailey. Back to Sloan, who gets the left. Great work from Bailey. Excellent work from Bailey. And he's an excellent rebounder for a guard as well, averaging eight rebounds a game. Very rare you'll see that from a guy at his position. Love. Gets into the key. Back out to Jackson. Five on the shot clock. Love takes it. I think they thought there was less time than uh, there was. Here's Sloan again, driving quickly. One in a whistle, not get one. Loving. Back iron for three. Almost forced to slow it down. Sloan with the pick and roll with Ali Hodgins, who drives hard to the hole for two. And that was all set up by Davis Sloan, who's been slowly controlling the offense for the Gladiators as he makes a nice little pocket pass there to Ali Hodgins. Excellent finish against the bigger, stronger defender in Menzies as well. No love leaves that short, but let's get a fortunate bounce of the ball there to retain possession. Walsh and Bunyan coming in as Ali Hodgins is still to get to his feet. 
Yeah, real surprise not seeing Tepe not even having his shooting top off and with the foul trouble and with the lack of depth, you think he would already be inserted into this game. So definitely need to keep an eye out on him tonight. Well, it makes you wonder if there might be an injury and they're not going to risk him. And nice. Menzies with the two-handed jab. Wow, that pick toed away. The defense almost tries to kick it, but he can't get contact and wide open for Menzies who finishes with a dunk. Almost driving hard. Tipped in by Andy Hodgson. And again, the Gladiators consistently getting in the teeth of the Leicester Riders defense. And as they drive aggressively there, Farrow just cleans it up with a tap in. Caledonia getting a delay of game warning there from the official for knocking the ball away after the score. Jackson behind the screen. So he drew iron. Durham gets bumped and he'll go to the line for two. So fast. There was an outlet pass to Bailey who made the right decision. He saw Durham trailing like a steam train down there. And he certainly has the foot speed on Menzies. All he could do there was give a little bump. And I love the pace that the Gladiators are playing. Every, it feels like every Leicester Rider miss, they're off to the races and, and pushing and in transition. It's clear that their game plan is take advantage of the number one league leading fast break points, see if they can add to that mark. free throw line. Malcolm going to come in for Caledonia and Nelson Henry back for Leicester. Well, that substitute pattern would say and suggest to me that Patrick Tape is injured. Ali Hodges getting a, a break here and he's done very well. Remember, he picked up those two early fouls. Very smart, intelligent since the and hasn't picked up a third. So they're a bit small here, almost having to guard Nelson Henry. Double team comes. Bowman's the open man. He gets it round. Good ball movement. They're scrambling here. Well, Caledonia. Loving gets his own rebound, goes back up, and he's fouled right on the shot clock butter. And that will be two free throws. That will be so frustrating for Coach Gareth Murray there. You know, good energy, good rotations there from Caledonia. And it's just at the last play, you see Bailey just jump in there. Oh, a little fouls like that. So frustrating for the coach. And that was just a, a text be, textbook, sorry, scramble drill, which most teams practice week in and week out when the team has a numbers advantage. And like you said, and right there at the buzzer, picking up a cheap foul. Very frustrating for a coach. Remember those four and five drills? I do. That's why I'm glad I'm here, fellas, because it's a lot of running. <laughs> well, you referenced it. It's a four and five drill, four defenders, five offensive. You're always a man down, so you're always chasing, chasing, chasing. Why they call it scramble drill. <laughs> Malcolm in the corner. Great work from Omwas. Back to Bailey. And that's going to be an offensive foul with Walsh taking the charge. And that's a great play there by Evan Walsh sacrificing his body. He'll go right at him there, picks up his second foul. And Bailey, for me, he has the biggest continuum in this league. What I mean by that is his bad games are really bad and yes. his good games are, are exceptionally great. And his continuum is so wide in that he can have one game where he's got five fouls, ten minutes, and zero points, and others he scores over 30 points. Bailey is that guy that really gets him going just because he can do so much for this team. Nelson Henry, and almost just leaving his hand in there, and he gets called. 
for the uh, foul. That's his first. And the last thing you want to do is personally send the best free throw shooting team to the line now where they now sit in the bonus. But then on the other side, if we talk about Tape, who looks like he's going to be unavailable tonight, is you don't want to pick up any cheap fouls because it looks like Owens is going to have to play big here tonight. There he is. As you can see, he's right down the end of the bench. Uh, he is listed to play, but he's he would have come in by now, surely. While there's this pause... I'll give you the latest from the other games. It's only four-point game up in Newcastle. London beating the Eagles 41-44. It's a bit bigger down in Bristol. 22-point lead for the Flyers, 38-16. And it's 19-15. Uh, Low scoring in Sheffield against Surrey. So surprised, Dan. <laughs> so surprised, Dan. So surprised what about low scoring in Sheffield? <laughs> hey, they're a bit more explosive now. Yes, than the, you watch this up. game every yeah, week. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new regime in Sheffield now. They score. Yeah. Jimenez under all sorts of pressure. Okay. Loving with the rebound. Yeah, it's a tough shot there from Jimenez. Uh, Jimenez has great vision as well. He's excellent at creating for his teammates. I think you'll want that one back where you're penetrating that pocket and look to get someone an open shot. Last couple of seconds of the first quarter. Lost back to Nelson Henry. Great play and laid in by the captain on the buzzer. And that will do it for the opening quarter here in Leicester. The Riders started it well. They finished it well. And they have a six-point advantage at the end of one here at the Morningside Arena. It's the Leicester Riders 22. The Caledonia Gladiators 16. We'll have the second quarter right after this break. Malcolm back to Durham has the mismatch looking to exploit it and doing so well he's so good at that and he's been that mm. you know, breath of fresh air since joining this team there's a reason why they're the first in points in the paint he's one of them and anytime you get that matchup as a guard you're licking your chops when you got the center there guarding you it feels like you're on an island from the big man's perspective loving block twice 
on Watts. Love not quite in front there. It's going to get called for the foul. Well, good take there from on Watts. You see him from right at the defender. And Love didn't quite have his feet set. I love the um, the pregame as well with you and Onwas. You know, when he you asked him about his, his identity and what he does for his team, he said the glue guy, but he said it with such pride. He understood the importance of, having, of being the glue guy, doing those things. And when you look at championship teams along the years, they have had those glue guys that have done anything and everything to make their team win. And who comes to mind is someone like Scott Martin, who was a former teammate of mine. He's happy scoring 20. He's happy getting 10 rebounds. All he cares is about is that W at the at the end of the night. And Owens is another one of those guys who takes pride in winning. First free throw. Quite a long way uh, off the mark. He is. Uh, 58% free throw shooter on the season. Well, Durham almost got a steal there. And that has a size mismatch here. Thrown two at him. Walsh down the lane. Can't quite finish, but he will shoot two. And how great has Evan Walsh been lately? He's seen an uptick in his minutes. Coach Rob is trusting him now. And his paying dividends last weekend in Newcastle, nine total points. Before then, it took him eight games to get to nine points. So playing very well and bringing a lot of energy to this Leicester Riders ball club. Just a prime example, isn't it, of young British players. You know, their opportunities are a few and far between. But when you get your opportunity, it's, it's snatched it with both hands and making sure as well you, you make a noise when you get that, when you get that, 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 that play in time. Well, speaking of uh, British players, maybe not so young anymore. Uh, Teo Ogan Dengby has got five points <laughs> up in uh, nice. Sheffield. That takes him past the 4,000 point mark. Four, sorry, 4,000 points wow. for one club. He's only the 10th player in BBL history to score 4,000 for one team. And he deserves it. He was my teammate back in 2011. And I always say he's one of the most improved players I've ever seen in this league as Durham drives there and gets fouled. But I would always see him first thing in the morning. He'd have his iPad out watching the NBA from the night before. Was just a student of the game. And you've seen the evolution in his game over the years. Alan Huntic going to return to the action for Caledonia. Well, home away from home for Ali Hodgett. His parents live in Leicester, and they're all here today. So he's got some uh, some fans. He's had a pretty good start to this game. Six points, four rebounds. Rolled the dice with those two early fouls. Is that why he was waving off the coach? He's like, I got, <laughs> I got people in the stands, coach. <laughs> I promise I won't pick up a third. <laughs> Love, open jumper, just a little short. Knocked away from Ali Hodges, but it comes right back to him. Durham underneath, couldn't squeeze it past uh, Nelson Henry. Walsh for three, got it. Big play there, back to back. Caledonia have to convert well, after that steal, but it's the left of Wilders who advanced the ball quickly. And Evan Walsh, confident, steps into that three. Hodges backing down, great footwork again. And that's what he can do, fundamentally sound there in the paint. Has an array of moves there with his back to the basket and just scoops it from the weak side. 
traveling violation called against Love as he goes through the key. Yeah, that call that call's always confusing because he, he we call it a pro hop when you jump off of one foot and you land on two, but the, the call, if I'm not mistaken, is you got to land on the feet simultaneously, and I think he might have won to his landing, so good call there by the ref. Going to come back into the game for Leicester. Durham again, change of pace to get himself to the rim. In that change of pace, oh, they, they've already had a warning. That's going to be a technical. Caledonia knocking the ball away. They got a warning early on, and there was a technical foul called and it is 25 Ali Hodzic who gets called for it let's have another look ball goes through and he's just batted it there yeah. and they had got a warning it's a needless play as well isn't it he doesn't need to do that and it's his third but when you talk about the struggles on the road it's plays like that that can that's avoidable right that you just you just can't do especially against a team again like the riders who rarely lose here you got to play almost perfect basketball and that's just a not a great play by the gladiators well only Hodzic pleading his case but uh, he definitely whacked the ball away and they definitely had a warning and that is the rule <laughs> Kenzie cross court to Walsh, who's open again. Ooh, halfway down and out for Evan Walsh. It's a good look, though. And you want to go back to the guy who's hitting shots. Good looking shot. It's a good miss. <laughs> it doesn't, go, doesn't go in, but good shot selection. Hunter with the mid range. Rebound Jackson. Walsh, nice pass, and Walsh lays it in. And that's one thing that he can do back in his Surrey days, getting out on the break and finishing it there for two. Lones trying to get right, Menzies, not show pass. Menzies throws that out. There's a giant seven foot three center at the gates. He said, you shall not pass. All the, tricky, the trickery in the world could it get you past that. That pass only just got over Walsh. Low misses. Good follow on Malcolm. His tip doesn't go. Jackson's going to take the three. And he's going to string it. Oh, this is where Caledonia in a bit of bother here. Left the Wilders getting hot in their own building. They're sharing the basketball and they're getting shots for the guys in the spots that they want. Durham throws it away. Walsh is out in front. Evan Walsh will take it home for Leicester. And suddenly they've opened up a double figure lead. And Gareth Murray is going to call for time here. 5.43 to go in the first half. And Leicester have their biggest lead of the game. Well, before the game, Drew caught up with Prince Omas to see what he's thinking of life in the BBL. Katie, Texas, I'm proud of you, bro. And, and you're in a championship game. What are you most looking forward to in next week's trophy finals? Uh, man, just being out on the court, you know, uh, being out with my guys and for the fans, too, I think it's good for the, for the club. First time in about 20 years. So just being on the court, being with my, my, my teammates, can't wait for it. And how would you describe your role for this team? Oh uh, man, glue guy, someone who just play defense, do little things on and off the court, uh, hustle plays, make make shots when it's my turn, just being that guy for my teammates. And how does the BBL compare to the other leagues that you played in? Uh, it's pretty similar. I think uh, competition is pretty high here. Uh, there's a lot of ex-G League guys, ex-Euro League guys, so I think the competition is a bit tougher. And $20 million stadium on the horizon. The future looks bright in Glasgow. Oh, man, I can't wait, man. I think that's going to be done in 20, 2026. Uh, when that time comes, hope I'm still around to be around, man. Thanks sure. for your time. It's too easy, man. Yep. Well, I feel obliged to point out that the Glasgow Rocks 
were in the final a few years ago. They've been to a few finals in recent years. They haven't won one in 20 years, but Kieran would want me to point out to the people that he got to he got to three finals with the Rose. I don't think he would, Dan. Yeah, no. you know, it's, it's painful memories for my friend Kieran. He doesn't like to talk about those uh, those finals he experienced with the Glasgow Rocks. Yeah, I think at his house he has a cabinet full of second place runner-up <laughs> trophies there. <laughs> Apologies, Kieran. <laughs> But they have the opportunity next weekend to, oh, Ali Hodgson throws it out of bounds to end 20 years of her and uh, put some names up alongside the likes of Ted Berry from that old uh, Scottish Rocks, as they were, team of 2004 that won the playoff final. Yeah, moving back to this game, the, the Gladiators better be very careful these last five minutes. If we think about the last time these teams faced here, it was the right before the half where the Riders went on a big run to ultimately close out this game. Menzies with everything but the finish there. There's a foul on the rebound. And it's on Zach Jackson. Wow, it's a technical foul for Ali Hodgic. Oh, wow, his that's fourth. his fourth in the first half. There's only 15 minutes gone. He, he suddenly looked surprised. He didn't realize it was on him. Wait, they put five fouls up on Ali Hodgson as well. Whoa. Unless there's some confusion, because the, the original... How's he fouled out? Did they, did they get two technicals on Ali Hodgson? The delay of game. Delay of oh, game. two technicals, wow. yes, of course, yes. He got a technical for the delay of game, and he's got a technical for verbals, so he's actually finished. He's out of the game. Wow. And not only is he out of the game, but he has to leave the uh, arena as well. What about the delay of game technical? Incredible. We were just talking about he's coming back to his hometown, and he has family here, and just like that, 15 minutes into this game, his evening is finished. And this, I always find those plays a little bit odd because it was the Caledonia who'd won that battle. He battled against the other two rebounders. He got the ball. Yes, there was contact, and he and he, and he felt aggrieved. He didn't get caught a foul, but they had possession. It wasn't a change of hands or where they feel you know hard done because they've lost possession. But those are the ones I don't understand. And we see it often amongst yes. players who get the call and they're still you, they're still arguing and they get a technical foul. It's just it just can't happen. Well, they didn't have much in the way of size at the start of the game. They've got even less now. Sloan spinning underneath, pulled down by Walsh. Walsh driving hard, rebound loving, gets blocked, goes up again and scores in the second attempt. Wow, and this is what you're going to see a lot of now. Leicester Warriors crash the board there. Yep. Significant size difference. And it's, you know, it's as hard as Alderweireld was playing there. You could see he was just outmatched. Leicester in the zone here. Just got that to Malcolm. Shot clock low, it's turned over. Leicester have it. Jackson out to Whelan, and there's a charging foul as Omwes hits the deck. And that's a great place. Heads up play by the veteran and Omwes, and slowing down was looked like was going to be a three pointer in the corner, but flipping back to the Gladiators, a team that has an opportunity to play in the finals on Sunday. And Let's have a look at the uh, incident involving. Ali Hodgins, this is the first one. They've already got a warning, so you can't knock the ball away, and you can see him bat it away. That's the needless one. He's got fouled there, and he's... Well, I don't know if it's something he said or throwing the ball or quite what it was, but whatever, the referee took exception to it, and he didn't even realise it as he walked down court. That's the thing as well, like, when you don't realise it, you already question what did he say. He didn't say a lot. That's one thing I can say there. I don't know what exactly the word to use, but he didn't say a lot, so, again, whatever he said must have had to have been pretty strong. Well, with the finger roll, even if he... Uh, 
even if he hadn't have got the oh I was about to say even if he hadn't got the first one he would have gone home to four fouls but then he wouldn't have been on three so. but it's a combination uh, yeah. of the two it's the quick word and the toss of the ball that yeah. looked a little bit I wouldn't say aggressive but maybe it was borderline but we'll never know but he'd won the battle that, that's the thing again that baffles me Bailey for the foul that's his third but going back to my point speaking about the gladiators who are playing in a trophy final next Sunday and, and you've been there before and you've been on a winning team every winner they have winning habits and you don't see championship caliber team make make mistakes like that getting ejected tough tough out Kenzie to the rim and Durham call for the foul well the upside is that an ejection on technicals doesn't involve any ongoing punishment so it's not uh, he's not going to get suspended for the next game or anything like that could you imagine that yeah Well, but Kieran was saying as well before we off. There's been a lot of hype and a lot of them. Um, you know, Caledonia Gladys, they're in the eye at the moment. You know, a lot of great things are happening up there. You have an opportunity to win some silver as well. I would rather play my last game well going into a final than, than not. Yeah. I know it seems like a really obvious statement, but confidence is everything. And this isn't the most high confidence team at the moment. The last five games, you'll look, there's a lot of L's in that column. Yeah. You know, they haven't been you know playing with conviction and you know, look this game's not over by any means but they're certainly at a disadvantage here with their two big guys out three big guys out excuse me well, that one drops in they do still have to uh play surrey tomorrow so maybe they can redeem themselves in that one if this one does get away from them there's still a long way to go in this game by the way oh good hands from onwards and he'll get the easy run back Wow, glue guy doing those little things. Perfect timing with the hands, and he's stolen that from one of the best players in the league in Patrick Wheeler. Good play. Well, Leicester's lead is down to nine. 2.47 to go here in the second quarter. And Rob Paternostro with a timeout here, and this one will be about making sure that his team finishes the half well in essence they could almost put this game away in the last three minutes if they finish this quarter 10-2 or 12-12-4 or something like that they could be too far away conversely if Caledonia get a bit of wind in their sails this game's right back in the balance at halftime well this is a Caledonia team that have struggled in this second quarter they only were, they only had 10 points up to that last deal and and then conversion on the layup so you know, you know, it's, it's actually be 14 points now in this in this quarter. So this is a team that you do not want to give early uh, easy points to, especially in the open floor. Well, halftime in the 7:30 game. Sheffield lead 33-27 against Surrey. Newcastle 50-47 ahead against London Lions at halftime. And uh, well, Bristol over the hill and far away uh, in the southwest derby, 54-20. They lead Plymouth. Goodness me. Half time? Yep. Wow. Well, it could be a good night for Newcastle. If they can win that and Plymouth lose, that gap suddenly gets smaller. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it would be only delaying the inevitable as far as it might take them till April instead of March to win the league title. Here's Walsh. Dancing his way in, and he probably should have passed it the first time. Oh, and he's lost the ball there on West, but he's managed to get it back and thrown it out of bounds for a lesser possession. Oh, that was the type of hustle that you that you wanted reward for a good play. He was the one who reacted. He lost the ball here, didn't give up on the play, reacted first, and oh, Johnny Bunyan was coming to him to relieve him, but just sails past Bunyan there and is able to collect it in. Mackenzie short, but it falls right into Nelson Henry's hands. 
Sloan and Henry looked at the referee, but meanwhile Sloan was all the way down corner of the layup. Wow, great play by Almost again. And it's David Sloan, a one-man wrecking machine, goes all the way to the rim. Top finish. Traveling violation caught against Nelson Henry. Caledonia have got the wind in their sails here. That's one thing you can say about Caledonia at times, they're a prideful team. You know, take a look at where they're at the moment, see the world against them. No Ali Frazier, no Ali Hodgetts, and you see they've got injuries there on the bench as well. In Tape. Durham to the rim. He converts and the foul will send him to the line. God, this me. Al Durham this time. Attacking the rim. If it's not David Sloan, it's Al Durham. And I'll take him. 12 points personal. Tough finish. Well, Al Durham from well, the prestigious of basketball institutes, Indiana Hoosiers. Basketball country. Yes. And that one drops in for him. And he has 13, 5 of 5 from the free throw line. Well, we'll check back into the game for Walsh. Short. And here comes Sloan again in the open court, getting all the way to the basket to cut it down to only two. And Rob Paternostro is going to have to call another timeout here with a minute to go. Caledonia's energy is on 100. You see the way they rotate their shots and the way that they're closing out to the, the shooters. Patrick Whelan forced into a really difficult shot there. The rebound, too, was secured. And David Sloan, he is a one-man offensive transition, and his conversion rate is devastating. Well, you think back when Bailey sat down with three and a half minutes to go. Leicester made a couple of free throws from that. They were 13 points up, 39 points to 26. The last nine points have been called, uh, scored by the Gladiators, and it's forced Leicester to call a timeout twice to try and stop this momentum. Yeah, Rob Patanashi won't be happy with the way his team's responded. And sometimes as well as a player, you, you see a key player like Farrell Hodgett's got the game, and you know, subliminally you're like, okay, we got this, and clearly the Leicester Riders have took a, a downshift in their gear. And it's been quite the contrast for the Caledonia Gladiators who have been energized I think from the adversity because they are playing fearless basketball at the moment led by slow Durham and the heroics from Onwas on the defensive end as well Whelan drops it off to Nelson Henry for two. That's a smart basketball play there. Good execution. Patrick Whelan penetrating and dumping it off to the six foot ten center who has a height advantage over everyone on the floor. Durham has the mismatch again. Gives it up to Bunyan. Shot clock getting low now. Durham with the head fake. Kicked out, needs to go up. Sloan's got to shoot, doesn't get it off in time. 24 second violation against the Gladiators. Good enough resistance there from Leicester Riders. In particular, Darian Nelson Henry, who was mismatched on the quicker guard, was able to stay in front of his the opposing player. Unusual shot clock violation there on the Gladiators. Well, the shot clock is on, but there's enough of a gap that Leicester should get the last shot of the game, of the half even. McKenzie with a quick step and uh, Malcolm coming across commits the foul. Yeah, just too late there. And Kimball McKenzie does an excellent job there. 
of finding that gap and exploiting it. Well, come in for Nelson Henry, which makes Leicester incredibly small now. Loving is the, I think Loving is the four and the five out there. There's only five seconds to go. But this is a lineup I suspect Leicester haven't played all season. And Love call for the foul, and they're over the limit, so it'll be two free throws. <laughs> David Stone done everything he's supposed to do there. He was on attack mode. He was so aggressive, so aggressive. The defense had to foul. You're right, though, Dan. This is a very unique set of lineups from both teams. You know, no real true five. Is this what the game's going to be like? Here? Well, yeah. It's five years time, we're already dying out. Yeah. Unbelievable. You just have to evolve, mate, from that elbow jump out to a corner three. <laughs> those, those knees were going way before the evolution. <laughs> Sloan makes them both. 1.8. It's thrown all the way down to Walsh. Off one foot and off the mark. And that will do it for a uh, eventful first half here at the Morningside Arena. Only four points separate the two teams, but that only tells a small part of the story of the first half here. It does indeed. There was a lot of drama squeezed into that second quarter, and it looked pretty dismal for the Caledonian Gladiators at one point. But it was the, the, the Gladiators who win that quarter, 23 to 21, and feel like they've smashed a little bit of momentum out of this game. Well, credit to their team because they were down 13. Their, their one centre had uh, fouled out on technicals. Another one of their key players on three fouls, but they responded incredibly to pull it back and you can see that uh, really it's the two point field goal percentage difference uh, that has kept them in the game Leicester have to do better than 39% yeah and I think even the more, most impressive thing there they're over three from the three point line they haven't made any threes but they haven't shot very many either everything has been positively attacking against uh, Rim now again this is the number one team in, uh, in points in the paint and they have been devastating in that area so far this evening well, eight points off the bench for Evan Walsh, and he is with Drew. Evan, in which been a half of uh, which been a game of runs, you take a four-point lead and into the half. What's your thoughts on the first half? Yeah, I mean, we were really happy with how we started. Um, we just knew we had to match their physicality. They're a very physical team. Uh, we came out on the right foot and uh, kind of got lost in the way a little bit through there. But they're a good team. Uh, we've got to keep them out of the paint. We, uh, we know they're very good in the paint. And we hear that coach talking about getting to the rim. So we've got to stop that to be successful in the second half. And we've seen over the last couple of games an uptick in your minutes and your performances. What have you done to stay ready and pounce on the opportunity? Uh, I mean, just... Staying ready is, is the key is the key right there. I mean, I'm always ready, regardless of if my number's called or not. And I think that's apparent for the whole team. One through 12, we're all ready to go. Um, and we want to put out a good show every time we're out here. So I'm ready whenever my number's called. And the Gladiators with an injection in that first half, and now they're short on bodies. How will you look to it, take advantage in the second half? Uh, I mean, we take a lot of pride in our conditioning here. Um, we really want to get teams in the second half. And regardless if they're down bodies or not, uh, I think that we fancy our second half matchup the whole time. So... With them being down, uh, I mean, Fraser's not here and uh, Ali Hodges being out the rest of the way. I mean, we've got to capitalize on that for sure. Thanks for your time. Good luck in the second half, Evan. No Thank you. Yeah, good first half, Evan Walsh, and in good first half for the Riders, although Caledonia is showing a lot of fight as the half played out, and they go into the locker room just four points behind. Reaction and analysis coming next.
uh, Whelan getting all the way to the bar and stop. Start, but they started to warm up. Barry and Nelson Henry, the skipper, leading by example. Right is hitting threes at crucial times, although Caledonia wouldn't let up. Although it's going to be a tall order for them to get back into this game, given that Farrow Aliodic ejected in the first half. I mentioned those Leicester threes, and we'll see them in a bit more detail in just a bit, but despite hitting some crucial downtown buckets, just 30%, look at that, Caledonia haven't landed anything from the three-point range. A four-point lead, though, given the short stack here in Achara, will be something that Gareth Murray will be reasonably comfortable with, given the way that game was going. I think there'll definitely be a positive you know, mood in the camp at halftime, but at the same time, it's... Uh, you, like you mentioned, it's a tall order without any bench at this moment in time. Without any bench, they travel with just nine, and we didn't see any minutes from Tape in the first half, so I'm guessing he must be in. Yeah, you know, I was quite shocked to see that. I didn't know he was he was hurt or he was carrying an injury, so now, obviously, with Faro Ali Hodges out of the game as well, it's, it's, a, it's a real tough task. Well, if that wasn't bad enough, travelling with nine, Ali Hodges out of the game, no Tape as well. I'll reboot my question from the top of the show. No Ali Fraser. You said that was going to be an issue at the top. How big an issue has it become it, now? It is massive. You know, it's, again, we I talk about a body can take a pain, you know, score inside. It's going to be really hard to stop uh, Leicester scoring inside. You know, they, they like to score points in the paint as well. Without that depth and, you know, be able to take, you know, block shots, get the rebounds, it could be a really tough task. It's a really interesting point because we, we touched on this at the top of the show. Both teams love scoring in the paint. Two of the most prolific in the BBL right now. So we suggested that the team that was going to get hotter from downtown was quite probably the team that was going to edge this. And that proved to be Leicester in the, the first half. Not particularly impressive to, statistically, as we just saw, but some crucial three points. Here. Yeah, four big threes that they've made. And so there, it's, it's still second chance opportunities kicking out, giving good looks. But like I, like I mentioned, Leicester take good shots. You know, so they're getting some good look, open shots every single time. In rhythm, you know, defensive balance, offensive balance. It's just great to watch. And with Zach Jackson, with Patrick Wynn, and that's something they can absolutely exploit in the second half. All right, let's talk about Faro Aliotic then, because before he was ejected, he was arguably 
the best player on the court as far as the Gladiators were concerned, playing so well, racked up eight points. He picked up six boards as well, so we concentrate on the positives. Getting in the paint, lethal from there, defensively as well, taking care of business. So it must be deeply frustrating to leave the game in the first off the way. Here. Infuriating, you know, he got off to a great start, you know, home crowd. He's a home, you know, see people in the fans with his banners, playing some good basketball, and then all of a sudden, just loses it. And you know, there, I, I, I look at that, there's a little bit of frustration, but you know, it's a tough call. It's yeah, a really do, tough call. Do you think it's, yeah, I was going to say, you think it, he was unlucky to be ejected? So the first one was idiotic. <laughs> that's, that's the only way I could describe it. He should never, but that second one, I think that's a tough, tough call. What will his loss do to Caledonia's game in the second half? What does it mean, particularly as, as we said, they're thin tonight? They're going to have to play small ball and go a lot faster, you know, and, and, and it's, uh, you know, a balance from the rebounds. It, you know, everyone's going to have to step up and really kind of take advantage, get a couple extra rebounds uh, between them to kind of fill that gap. All right, it's only four points, though, and as Anna Dam is saying, Incom showing a huge amount of fight ahead of the trophy final next Sunday, which, of course, will be live right here on Sky Sports before the second half. And we will do, well, Kieran Achara's favourite part of the week. It's our BBL. Please. Oh, good pressure defense from the Decker. Just got a sniff of that ball. Ali oop to Sharma. And Sharma throws it down. Man, his head was above Ooh. the ring there when he took off. Williams creates room for his own jump shot, knocks it down. What a play from Dirk Williams there, able to pull it back, stop on a dime. Mid-range jump shot's good. Solo Waddy drives Sharma. Oh my goodness! Huge slam okay. from Sharma. Jackhammer then. <laughs> Goodness me, Woo. so athletic. The springs he has to those gaps. Decker with seconds ready down. Oh my goodness, what a dunk from Sam Decker. Sam Decker pops up with a highlight play. He had one thing on his mind, and that was to get to the rim. And he got high above the rim to slam it down. Now, I think that might be your toughest call of the season. I don't know where to go with that. There was three of them that was really, you know, kind of... That Decker finish was nice, you know, but that Pipkins, you know, <laughs> the Gladiators, but that was absolutely disgusting. Yes, it was. Congratulations to Jalen Pipkins. Kieran Achara's disgusting play of the week, right? Second half about to tip off here in Leicester. And it is all to play for because despite the early dominance and seeming control from the champ, Caledonia fought their way back into this, much to the frustration of coach Rob Paternostro. A four-point ball game. Let's tip it off next.
It's a four-point ball game here in Leicester and the Riders will be keeping one eye on the score between London and Newcastle, an upset on the cards yet. And maybe the title race isn't done and dusted. Second half about to get underway. Let's get back to Adam Dan. Well, the Riders might be keeping one eye on it. I think Drew Lask has got both his eyes on it with <laughs> yes, the sir. Eagles off double figures with 11 minutes to go. Yeah, do you think they must have had Sky Sports on in the locker room? So they was upset at the top of our show because they look, they're playing motivated and inspired tonight. Well, we will keep you in touch with uh, what is happening at the Virtue Motors Arena. As I say, London's lead is such that at the minute it's the difference between they, in theory they could they could have won it this weekend in theory they needed six results to go their way uh and only one of them has thus far but they were more on pace for the end of march and it might just shift into april now if they can't come back in newcastle well we know one thing that the leicester riders must take care of business here first if um before anything else matters. Well, I know you're always right in Bristol. Bristol are gonna win tonight. <laughs> Dang. Drew Lasker. <laughs> you did walk into that one. I did, jeez. That's here's, my fault. Here's Whelan. Oh, it's through the hands of Loving and out of bounds. Wow, shaky start here for Leicester Riders, and that's that second quarter grew the Confidence and pride of the gladiators did awesome. And the last thing you want to give a team that has nothing to be, nothing to lose is belief and confidence. So slow to on watch. Back out to Bailey. Room for the three. And he misses. Sloan's going to fire one up. And there is the first triple of the game for the gladiators. Howard. And created by Omworth's energy. Good offensive rebound. Gets it back out to his point guard. Who has been firing tonight. 15 points for David Sloan. Mackenzie rims out. Oh, Nelson Henry a little too strong on the putback. Bailey has room to the basket. He jams it in. And Caledonia are in front. Wow. That's unacceptable for a Leicester Riders transition defense as the seize opens up as Bailey flushes it. And now the Gladiators sit here with a one-point lead with a depleted roster and a starter that's been ejected. It's just strange as works. Four on five there. You pack the middle, you protect the rim, and give up the three. Well, they were. 39-26 behind at the point at which uh, Bailey picked up his third foul. But it's been all Caledonia since then. Here's Onwas from behind the arc. Rebound McKenzie. Whelan ripped away by Sloan. Leicester ball on the end. Well, Someone I think, just got another warning. Yeah, I think Nelson Henry just got a warning there. It's that time of year, fellas. Things get chippy. I think Bailey's got the foul first, and that is going to be foul number four on Jeremiah, ba Jeremiah Bailey. Well, a shake, of, shake of the head from Bailey there, and I don't know, he might have a case. Mark Lovin was trying to drive there, and Saw Bodo's into Sloan. I wouldn't be surprised to see Coach Murray pull out his 1-3-1 one, one zone that I haven't really seen much this year, but we know that's the staple of the Gladiators. That they... well, I think Nelson Henry's just got a technical there. He must have been chatting away during that free throw. So somebody will have to walk the other end of the floor. It'll be Sloan to shoot a free throw in between the two free throws for Caledonia. And that's two weeks in a row that we've seen this from the Leicester Riders bigs. Last week in Newcastle with Menzies and now which actually ended up getting him ejected as well if I'm not mistaken and now Nelson Henry here picks up a tech. 
Well, it was it wasn't ejected. It was his fifth foul right, with right. Menzies. But uh, Nelson Henry was just saying he was talking to Onwaz. That doesn't mean what you're saying is not heard by the referee. But anyway, that free throw is made. So we'll go back to where we were. Loving at the line. And he makes it. But the point is, is that for fans that don't know that a technical foul counts as a personal foul, so it could pay dividends here late. Sloan into the key, floats it up short. Durham with the tip, almost winning the loose ball. And the foul is going to be on McKenzie. Goodness, they look like skills out there, bodies flying everywhere. One thing that I can say about the Gladiators is they've been relentless all night on those 50-50 balls yes, and those Lucy's and and you know that's the, the winning mentality that I was talking about a championship team that you must possess and I know they are looking forward to that translating into next Sunday. London have cut it to five at the end of the third quarter. Caledonia trail by two here, lobbed into Bailey. Bailey leaves it short. That's good defense there yeah. because Henry just What's forward. Bailey doing? What is he doing? Well, There's I'm... just no need for that on four fouls. I'm sorry, that's just a bonehead play there by Bailey. You know you got four fouls, you know your bench is short. What are you doing there from 60 feet? That isn't your forte. You just got to get back and play solid defense. Jeremiah Bailey has the biggest continuum in this yeah. league. I, I stand by my statement. When he is good, he is astonishingly good. When he's bad, he does things like this. This isn't the first time we've seen him get fouled out. It's just not an intelligent play. Well, Olmach gets called for a foul on the rebound. Well, you say he knows he's on four fouls. He's turned to the table and went, I'm on four. So he didn't know he was on four fouls. I'm sorry. You're a, profes worse. No, yeah, you're a yeah. professional basketball player. You should know exactly how many fouls you, you have. Well, even if you have three, why would you want to pick yeah. up your fourth foul yeah, there yeah. at half court when there's seven minutes left in the third quarter? It's unacceptable. And if you were down by 25 yeah, points, I'd kind of get it. You've clocked out. You're ready to, you to go to Surrey. It's a two-point game. Yes. It's unbelievable how you could just ah not stay locked in mentally. And you can see it down Garrett Murray's face. You know, he's uh, wearing his emotions on his sleeve there. And I, I'm, I'm with him. Well, Garrett might have to bust his sneakers out at this rate. <laughs> I would take him. <laughs> I would too. He made one three-pointer tonight. I know, he, yeah. I know he'd increase that. Here's Durham looking for number two. No, that's short. And Lester will watch that run out of bounds. And if I'm Durham, I got to put Nelson Henry on his back foot like he did there in the first quarter when he had him there on the top of the key. Can't bail out the big fella there. Shot clock hadn't started. So the referee just stopped the uh, game to tick those few seconds off. It's correct now. Oh, nice pass, and a great finish from Zach Jackson for two. Beautiful attack mode there for Patrick Whelan, penetrating the middle, and then the beautiful pass here. And complimentary finish there from Zach Jackson. Onwas with his third foul. Just caught him on the elbow. Three point play. in a zone. Oh no, uh -oh. Omos has gone down. He's grabbing his ankle. It's deflected it out of bounds. He's grabbing his Achilles. Oh, this. This could not happen at a worse time for Caledonia the week before the cup final. 
Oh, oh. God. God. Dear, oh dear, that's the thing about those ones as well. Those can take a couple weeks. I mean, the sensible thing would be for him now to to leave this game because there's, there's bigger pictures on the horizon. But the bright spot, if there's any, is that it, it doesn't look like an Achilles, what I first initially thought. It's definitely in an ankle he stepped on Nelson Henry's foot, but it couldn't come at a worse time. Well, we don't know the degree as well of Patrick Taffe's injury. Ali Frazier, of course, didn't travel today either. Tape, we uh, have had an update that it's, uh, he's got a foot injury and he's on day to day at the moment, which sounds a little bit more positive. But uh, obviously, all eyes are on next Sunday as far as Caledonia and their fans are concerned. I was just going to say that that's a team that got their eyeballs on next Sunday. Well, almost just picked up another foot injury, which is going to be day to day as well. I mean, yeah. that's. You don't know how long those last for sometimes. Well, Omar is getting treatment on the bench. I'd be amazed if we see him again tonight. Even if it doesn't feel too bad, you just won't want to risk it. Bunyan with a massive size mismatch there. Malcolm misses everything for three. Well, we've seen Malcolm have some big games in here. He's that guy you want to find in those open space, spots on the three-point line. Doesn't get it to go there, but he's proven time and time again he's more than capable of consistently locking that down. But this is the moment for the Leicester Riders where they got to step on the gladiator's throat, put this game to bed, and do that. Exactly. He's one of those players too that shows no mercy. As you say, the score rate he did in college carries that over to the pro game this could be a little run here now for the, the riders here's mckenzie a two and then a three for kimball mckenzie and let's have the momentum back and a nine point lead and that's exactly how it's done kimball mckenzie who's been a thorn in every team side this season when you see the opponent wobble in there you got to knock him out and put him on the cave it's as he hits that beautiful arc on that shot, feet set, money in the bank. Well, Leicester uh, opening up a nine-point lead here. Are you interested in the other scores, Drew? Give uh, it to uh, me. Sheffield 57, Surrey 48. No, 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 move on, move on. Bristol 81, get to Plymouth the meat and potatoes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Newcastle 77, London 71. Okay. Seven minutes to go. Okay. I don't have my champagne bottles out yet, but it's on ice. It's on ice. Well, that would be some result in the uh, battle for the playoffs, because you were talking before the game about Newcastle's schedule, and I think Darius has is, is gone a little high, saying they need seven wins. There are obviously three wins behind uh, Plymouth, and they just need to get above Plymouth, don't they? Um, Plymouth losing uh, tonight, but that would be... Uh, one in the unexpected column when you looked at the 10 games that Newcastle have left to play. I mean, I just automatically chunk that up as a loss. I mean, the game against London in the future when the league is wrapped up, maybe that's a win depending on how London plays it. But tonight, you would think the London Lions will come in with the mentality of just getting this thing over with. So could be a huge win for this Newcastle Eagles franchise tonight. Say so within there, it was within their hands to win it with about six games to spare and without worrying about what Leicester and Bristol did. And this will just tick it down. And you just want to get it wrapped up as soon as you can. Here's Durham. Late in the shot clock, spinning and scoring. Beautiful. And that's what Durham does. He's great at getting to his spots. He can change his speeds. And once he gets to that midi area, it's normally cash. Loving. Back iron. Quite had his shooting touch here tonight, Mark Loving. Malcolm for three. Knocks this one down. The resilience of this guy is deep. It's so fun to watch. Man down. We'll bring another one in and fill the gap. Mackenzie's pass is off the mark and out of bounds. And as you say, every time they've looked like they're... Uh, about to 
land the knockout blow. Alanonia come with a, a few counter punches. And that's the same turnover we've seen from Wheeling to start this half. Just the miscommunication between him and his teammate there. Sloan from the elbow. He knocks it down, and it's a two-point game once again. What your superpower can be as well. We've both been in this situation before. Nothing to lose. You've got no real pressure. You just can play easy. It's guys like David Sloan, Al Durham as well. They'll play with, you know, they'll play with weightless, you know, nothing on their shoulders, and that's dangerous for the Riders. Tenses three rims out. Caledonia can tie it up here. Durham, you're stepping. And he's fouled, so he will go to the line looking to level the game. And the Gladiators have been off to the races all night long as Durham euros and slides his way to the basket and just comes up short there on the finish, but clear foul there by Willing and he heads to the line for two. What a chance to tie this game up. I think the quicker the Leicester Riders can get Patrick Wheeler back into the flow of things as well. You know, she commented since that injury hasn't quite been able to have the same impact. And he's a, a, a both end of the floor impact player as well. Excellent defender and a quick feet as well. And, and we've seen the devastation he can cause on the offensive end of the floor. The quicker they get number 12 up to speed, the better this Leicester Riders team are going to be. And it's 23 points in his last three games, and we've seen him score that in, in one game. So they're going to go far in the playoffs. They need Patrick Whelan. Jackson with the mid-range. He knocks it down. He's such a professional, isn't he? Whenever things get a little bit tight, he steps up. Durham rims out the three. Loving. McKenzie. Corner triple off the mark. Rebound Durham. Durham going quick. Back to Sloan. Good up and down from Loving. Excellent defense there from Mark Loving. That's what you want to do against David Sloan. You just want to make things difficult. And that's what Malcolm did for Jackson there. Bunyan for three. And Caledonia uh -oh. in front. Wow. wow. That's the captain, Johnny Bunyan. Finds himself a little bit of space there. And he knocks it down. And Caledonia just snatching this game. Well, Rob Padanosho going to talk things over here. As his team cannot take advantage of the shorthanded Caledonia Gladiators and the undersized Caledonia Gladiators. They've defended pretty well given the lack of uh, height that they have. They forced Leicester largely into sort of mid-range shots and three-point shots. Yeah, but I've taken a step further from the Leicester Riders' defense. If we think about the three-pointer from Malcolm there, that was uncontested. And then Bunyan there, you know Bunyan is one of the best shooters in the league, so you got to force him to put the ball on the floor. So even though it looks, it's, it's good defense, but it's not good enough according to the personnel, and that's an area that We've talked about all season with the Leicester Riders that we've seen some slippage from. So, yeah, Leicester Riders just missing a little bit of a fight as well. There's guys there on that that roster that typically bring that fight as well. Drew out of not playing today. Connor Washington, of course, we know the energy and the fight and the grit he brings. But it, it's been below par, the effort. And, you know, if this was a game of effort alone, Caledonia would be up by 20. 100. You know, complete contrast. And there can't be more. Can't give enough praise for Caledonia. Back against the wall. Currently winning by one. Love brings it forward for Leicester. Jackson spinning into trouble, spinning out of trouble, but couldn't score. Good resistance inside there. Played defense in numbers, good hands. Made it difficult for Zach Jackson there inside. Sloan for three. Batted out by Malcolm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Shot clock getting low, Bunyan having to attack. That's not really his game. No, it's really difficult for Bunyan to create with a shot clock winding down. He needs to play off that screen. Jimenez with his hands in there. And Loving will go to the line for two. But that's exactly how you guard Johnny Bunyan. So a great defensive effort there as Loving cuffs it and attacks the basket strong. And he heads to the line for two with a chance to retake this lead. Fifty-nine, fifty-nine, one fifty-two to go. In the third. Figures half of his points from the free throw line. Sloan, spinning, looking for room, leaves it short, loving with the rebound. Walsh for three, knocks it down, Evan Walsh hits his second three of the game. Big shot there by Evan Walsh, he calms the troops where he's played terrific all night and steps up and cans that left wing three. They're kind of Donia playing in that zone now, they quite compact in the middle, will of course give Evan Walsh that shot, almost dared him to shoot it. Yeah, an ambitious pass from him now. Love. They switch Bunyan to Malcolm. That's still advantage loving. Tip from Love doesn't go. Malcolm for three. Walsh with the rebound. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen a Johnny Bunyan and Fraser Malcolm ball screen action there. <laughs> I'm sure that's not what Coach Garrett Murray would have talked about during the week. The last few seconds here of the third quarter. McKenzie for three. Back iron. Sloan is going to have to heat from half court the back of the ring and that will do it for the third quarter here in Leicester while well, the riders lead but only just Rob Paternoster and his team lead by four but Gareth Murray's men have certainly put up a fight despite all the adversity they faced here in Leicester it's 63 59 here at the end of the third quarter we will have the last 10 minutes right after this break
the uh, cup final. He's just hit two three-pointers up in Newcastle, and the Lions lead by four with less than two minutes to play. Wow, what a nice luxury to have, yeah, right? Yeah. Just, and, yeah. We saw him in the finals just with a bomb ankle. He just walks in and, you know, arena filled with 15,000, and he just takes the game over, hit two buckets, and good night. What a talent. So maybe the title being wrapped up in March is back on once again. Here's Whelan. Love misses the three. Came off loving. And it's a Caledonia ball and another chance to level the game up. And they just keep hanging in there. Loan. Stolen away by Love. Bunyan running back. Here's Whelan. And he'll lay it in for two. Well, Carrington Love is one of those guys hasn't quite settled in offensively, but he's been present defensively. A lot of the games he's played, that's good anticipation from him, good hands, and a nice pass. Walsh a little late there. Malcolm had got good position. Well, Bunyan guarding Nelson Henry doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Wheeling to the rim, gets his own rebound. Still can't convert. The tip from Nelson Henry won't go in. Wheeling again, My still won't go in for Leicester. Oh goodness <laughs> me. But just couldn't get it to Gallo and Caledonia stay with it. Durham looks at the shot clock. Now looking to step back for three, misses everything. Excellent defense there from Evan Walsh. Didn't make sure he contested heavily, but didn't fall in his landing space. It's a really good example there of how to contest a three-point shot. And you can see on that possession there, the galactic axis starting to creep in on the gladiators. No one really having that burst to kind of take advantage of the mismatch up top. So fatigue could well be a factor here in this last seven minutes and 40 seconds. Love cross court to Jackson, he's fresh back into the game. And he can't convert, loving with the rebound. And Preston do have the size out there to win that. A good reaction there from Mark Love, and he was the first to react, as you say, Danny. Looks, he looks like he's seven pounds. Oh, Patrick Whelan with the denial. Wow. So we're covering Patrick Whelan, looks pretty healthy to me. Nelson Henry got caught in two mines there and ended up traveling with it. What a play Here's by another Whelan. Coming from the back side. Wow. That is a clean one. Doing a little window cleaning there. <laughs> I don't know if that was a travel, you know. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Well, yeah. Yeah. I think, hold on. Two, I'm, two, come on. Here. Come on travel. Travel. I feel the referee blow the whistle before it was either going to be a travel or a charge, either or. That was a clear trap, yeah. Strong, uh, strong game for the referee then, yeah. fellas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, Bunyan misses an easy one. And that will stay with Caledonia as it came off Patrick Wheeler last. And that's one thing Bunyan isn't accustomed to being wide open under the basket with his weak hand. He's more comfortable down on the perimeter where he can unload on that three ball missed opportunity there blocked by menzies but he can't hang on to the ball well, it wasn't quite as athletic as patrick whelan's block but it's the same uh, it's the same result yeah. good protection there of the paint from aaron menzies that's a deep one off the ball Malcolm's had to be aggressive from the three-point line. He's one for five. That hasn't quite been his evening. It hasn't been Loving's evening either. That will be the last of all. And you said it earlier, and off air, this game just 
been weird all night. Of uncharacteristic turnovers by the Leicester Riders. Balls bouncing around, ejections. Well, Caledonia is still in it despite the adversity they've faced. And here's Malcolm looking to make it a one point game, and he does. Wide open. A lot of time to think about that one. And Fraser Malcolm knocks it down. And even though he struggled tonight, he's not going to miss many like that with his feet set with that much time. Pass is deflected away. McKenzie returns, six to play, one point game. Jackson, he beat him with just jab steps there. Sloan at pace. Jimenez in the corner, long two, just had his toe on the line, but Caledonia are back in front. Goodness me, that's good. Fast. Penetration again from David Sloan. Carl Jimenez now knocks down a jump shot. Wheeling for three. Straight to <laughs> well, the dream killer, Patrick Whelan, just when you feel Caledonia got this one back. Big reply there from Patrick Whelan. Oh, Menzies has slipped, so Malcolm gets a free run to the basket. And again, Malcolm taking advantage of the slip there, getting all the way to the rim with no help defense in sight. And this is, a, I know it wasn't in the cards, but it's a tied ball game here with five minutes remaining. Menzies on the turnaround, uh, McKenzie even on the turnaround. That's tough. He'd be able to pivot there and get away from the basket and look under control the whole time during that maneuver. Nice play there from Kimball McKenzie. And we know that he's a guy that's not afraid of this moment. Malcolm in the paint. Back out to Jimenez. Jimenez driving to the rim, not the way it's stolen by Jackson, but he was just on the line. So it'll be possession for the Gladiators. Well, the one thing you would say about Caledonia playing small is Leicester have had to match them for quite a lot of the game. Yeah, it seems to have weirdly worked out in the favor of the depleted team. Who have had nothing off the bench. Block. Oh no, foul call. Wow. We're going to have to take another look at that because it looked clean to me, but the ref is saying that is on the body, so. I'd like to see that again. Malcolm with a chance to level the game up at 72 points apiece. Here's another look, Drew. Yep. Left hand. Left hand on the body before he takes the shot off. Good call. Oh no! I'm, 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 again, I'm, I don't know. I didn't think it was when I watched it live, and I'm, I'm still not convinced after that replay. Well, you can't have your hand on someone when they're shooting the ball. Yeah. Well, we're tied at 72 with four to play. McKenzie, short, gets his own rebound, throws it up, and Sloan will be called for the foul. It's a smart play. You know you've missed the shot. You, you're not the biggest player on the court, but you're the first to react. And he sort of gets a foul in the act of shooting. Smart play there for the ex-Ivy League point guard. And we've seen it all year. He just has a different pep in his step. And, and you know, and confidence. All these players that's professional, are talented, but... Ultimately, it comes down to that self-belief, that confidence factor. And you can tell the way McKenzie, he walks different, talks different, and he's definitely playing different this year. Well, London have squeezed it out in Newcastle. 85-88 heartbreak for the Eagles at the end. London now three wins from the title. It'll go to two if Leicester lose. 
Sloan driving through. He's on the floor. Because Bristol lost at uh, Manchester. Oh, let's hope Sloan's okay. So they dropped to nine defeats. They've won tonight, so they've got 21 wins. Leicester are on eight defeats, although that's essentially the equivalent as Bristol because London have the head-to-head -head already. They don't have it with the Flyers yet. Excellent play there from Kimball McKenzie, who just swipes down and gets that enough on that ball there to create the fumble from David Sloan. And he gets a poke in the eye for his troubles, but the possession will go to the Leicester Riders. So excellent play there from Kimball McKenzie. Yes, excellent help side defense because we know that first step by Sloan is one of the best in the league and that was a for sure layup but McKenzie comes in and strips him loose. And the home fans trying to do their bit with three and a half minutes to play. Their team lead by two. Whelan. Walsh late in the shot clock, driving in. It's going to be a charging foul on Evan Walsh. And again, we talked about the Leicester Riders defense, the previous possession. Now the Gladiators, as Ali Durham steps in, has his feet set on an out of control. Evan Walsh and takes the contact and charge all day. Great play. You're right, though, in what you're saying. It's like Leicester Riders are matching the lineup to the Caledonia Gladys. I don't understand why you wouldn't put Nelson Henry in the middle there to get you some high percentage shots around the rim. He'll out, you know, he's outsize anyone so quite significantly as well. Fraser Malcolm, the tallest, at like 6'7". But instead, it's they're going pound for pound. Well, it's who they're guarding at this end, isn't it? That's part of the problem. Here's Durham. Under pressure, and he'll go to the free throw line. Mark Loving called for his third. Seventeen points for Durham. He is nine of nine from the free throw line this evening, looking to tie it up with three minutes and seven seconds to play. Eleven without a miss from the foul line for Al Durham. Wow. Jackson, loving with the head fake, resets, misses the three, rebound from McKenzie. There's a foul on the rebound. I don't think McKenzie's basket will count. No, it won't. The foul is on uh, Kyle Jimenez. I think Leicester would have rather the two points. Yeah, that's only the second foul by the Gladiators this quarter, so got some fouls to give, and we'll replay this thing with 14 seconds on the shot clock here. Third personal on Jimenez. Mackenzie to Walsh. That's nice play. You see Kimball McKenzie in this league. He's looking to create for himself. But what that does is he's in the heart of the defense there. Nice dump down pass to Evan Walsh and a nice reverse layup. Sloan drives it all the way to the basket, ties it up again. Oh, defense again, step slow. Really poor defense, you've got to get over. But that's There's a the big guy inside there, and Mark Lovin, half a second too slow. Whelan, forcing his way to the basket for two, and with 157 to go. Gareth Murray calls for a timeout. 
This one still very much in the balance. Of course, when we saw Leicester a few weeks ago up in Manchester, it might be more than a few weeks, we went to overtime. Who would rule it out now, Drew? Yeah, and we talked about Whelan's struggles on his return, but we know when he get downhill on his right hand, he's one of the best we have in a British basketball league as he finishes through contact and pushes the Leicester Riders up by two. It's another big shot from Patrick Whelan as well. He hit that big three as well during a vulnerable time for the Leicester Riders, and that time goes right down the middle. Nice play. I'll just quickly give the finals from the three other games. Sheffield 75, Surrey 70. Uh, mentioned that Newcastle were beaten 85-88 London. 99-60, Bristol won the Southwest Derby. And this one still to be decided with 157 to go. Leicester by a basket. Leicester out on court and waiting. Here come Glasgow. Well, hot shot the mascot is a little slow off the court there. They get a technical for having six on the court. He's wearing kit. He's still wandering off. I'm assuming it's a male horse, I don't know that. Here's Sloan, behind the back. Throws out, Malcolm for the lead! Back iron, but Sloan gets the rebound. Wow, it was a good Durham miss. Durham now! And, Cl and Caledonia are ahead! Wow, big shot. Al Durham, what a game he's had as well, he steps up, he's counted, 22 points personal for Al Durham. It's a blocking foul on Sloan, they're not over the limit, it'll be a sideline ball. Yeah, they did a good job they, to, to preserve their fouls, only the third foul of the quarter for them. This is unbelievable, onwards is on the bench there, Tape. Bailey all encouraging their team. Three key players. And a fourth one in the locker room. Fourth one in the locker room. Ali Frazier at home. It's yeah. Unbelievable. This it's performance. A, it's a pretty good five they don't have. Not bad at all. Well, they might still win the game. Kenzie gets it for Leicester. 80 seconds to play. McKenzie gets into the key and scores! It's a huge shot there, Kimball McKenzie. He's so good at creating for himself. No fear mentality. Beautiful finish. Caledonia looking to take the lead back. Slung for three. Off the mark. McKenzie grabs the rebound. It was a rush shot, wasn't it? Mm. Kenzie running down the clock. Ten on it as he goes. Gets to the pull-up under pressure. Gets his own rebound. Out to Loving, into Walsh. Jackson, pass deflected, gets it back. Six on the shot clock. McKenzie frees himself. Too strong. Caledonia have it. 30 seconds to play. Sloan, knocked away. Great defense from Jackson. And Malcolm with the foul. Wow. David Sloan does, did, excuse me, what he's done all game. He attacked the rim, but I think there's a deflection, you know. Jackson, I think uh, Jackson gets a hand on it here. attack here and, oh, what a play, Zach Jackson. It just takes the ball, the momentum, momentum excuse me, away from David Sloan. And he can't quite gather it back again and power it through for a shot. Well, that was only the fourth foul on Caledonia, so they need one more to send Leicester to the line. First of all, Leicester have to get the ball in, and McKenzie gets free. Bunyan's going to go and foul him, and Kimball McKenzie will go 
to the free throw line. Kimball McKenzie, a 90% free throw shooter on the season. Gareth Murray is going to give him a minute to think about it. And he's going to call that timeout. And it's one of them where, for Gareth, if you use the timeout now, maybe he thinks about it, comes out, ice the shooter and all that, and he misses. But obviously, in using the timeout now, he can't advance the ball if McKenzie makes the second free throw. So he's going to have to draw up a play. When they've got players as well on this Caledonia team, the 20 seconds, 21 seconds left, Sloan, Aldorf, and you know, foot speed downhill, you, you, you more than likely want them to be running from, from full court. I don't think you lose a lot of time in that as well, as opposed to inbound with the ball from half court. I mean, I would want Aldorf or David Sloan running, at, running, running you know, full court at, at the defense. It's also his last time out, so he, he's there's still 20.8. They could potentially have two offenses left because if they come and get a quick score, they might need another foul depending on whether it's a two or a three. Yeah, that's right. And it's all your scenario based at the moment. So where you have to look at statistically, Kimball McKenzie at 90 percent from the three for, from the free throw line. Well, we've seen everything else happen in this game. So you wouldn't you wouldn't bet on a 90% free throw shooter missing free throws at the end, would you? you the wouldn't. one difference I have about Kimball McKenzie, which I think he's a bit of an outlier, he's been that guy since the game has been in jeopardy. He's wanted to take over. He's that type of guy as well. So I'm I'm saying he's going to make both of these. Well, like Al Durham, he is now 11 for 11 from the free throw line. If you're going to miss one, you miss the second because it's a live ball, although Leicester have no rebounders. So he's got to make it. And he does, no doubt about it. To Caledonia with 20 seconds, need a three to tie. Jimenez going for the two and getting two. Wow. Good finish there from Cole Jimenez. He's got a hit. I think they lost a couple of tenths of a second on that score there. The referee Yudansky said 11.2, and he was watching it closely as Jimenez scores. So Leicester are going to call a timeout. That gives Rob Padanostro the option to advance the ball into the front court. Obviously, if you advance the ball, uh, you can't turn it over under your own basket and give a score. But if you don't advance the ball, because it's a made basket, you can run the baseline, and that gives you an advantage in inbounding the ball. I suspect he will advance the ball, but there is benefit in not. What would you do, Dan, if you were the coach? I would advance the ball. But I've seen a team, I've seen a team from the halfway line, up one, throw the ball backwards, turnover laid in on the buzzer to win. The old Worthing Bears, I think it was. I believe there isn't much in this game you haven't seen, Dan. Well, true. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just calling me old there, aren't you? <laughs> Experience. Wisdom. Experience. Wisdom. He's advancing the ball. So Leicester will get possession in the front court. Look for it to go to McKenzie, I should imagine. Object number one, get it into a red shirt. Preferably McKenzie would be Leicester's uh, view here. Well, it's into Walsh, and Walsh is quickly fouled. And Evan Walsh... Well, you can get better than a 90% shooter. You can get a 100% shooter going to the uh, free throw line, although he's not 100% anymore because he's one for two today. He makes the first. So trying to make it a three-point game once again. Walsh has only taken two free throws before today's game. This is his fourth. Ooh, the second one right to feet. So again, they need a three to tie with 9.6. Here comes Dora. Is he going to pull it? Yes, he is. He airballs it. 
And that might be that. Have Leicester got one more timeout? Yes, they have. So Rob Paternoster is going to use it. Because you can't run the baseline on a missed shot. You want the ball in the front court. So timeout is called by Leicester with 3.9 seconds to go. Well, it was always difficult oh. for Caledonia to get a good look there. They had 10 seconds and, you know, when you shoot a quicker shot, of course, you've always got the possibility of grabbing an offensive rebound. So it wasn't a, a terrible idea from our Durham. Just the execution wasn't there and the contest was pretty heavy, which made things a little bit more difficult. Well, it's one of those things. If you pull up a little bit further out, you're more likely to be open rather than uh, if you try and get closer to the line, the defender knows you're, you need a three, so he's waiting for you to shoot it. Well, that's what these guards are doing. The new age pull up deep. McFoley from Spurry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Closer to the half court than he is the three-point line. So Leicester again advance the ball. Whelan to inbound. And it looks like the same play. They've got to get it in. They've thrown it away. Can you believe it? A chance here. Sloan to Bunyan on the buzzer with the rearrange. Too late. Didn't go. The referee had already waved it off. And the Leicester Riders have dodged a bullet here. Gareth Murray will be delighted with the perseverance of his team. The way they just kept on going no matter what was thrown at them. And they came within a, a shot of potentially winning that game. Well, for all the Caledonia fans out there watching, I think they should be immensely proud of their team's effort this evening. And if they bring that same level of fight in the... BBL Trophy Final, they've got a very good chance of winning it because they were men down, they were depleted, adversity on level 100, but it didn't matter. This Caledonia team found a way to create themselves an opportunity to win this basketball game, and they almost did. Well, they will be hoping that Prince Onwatch, who's still limping as he goes out onto court, is just a minor problem, and that can be solved in the next couple of days. Well, there are not too many games that Leicester will shoot 36% from the floor in their own building. There are not too many games where a team will win shooting 36%, but somehow Leicester have managed to do that. 25 to 27 sure helps from the free throw line. Yeah, Leicester Brothers, they just have more bodies, and, and they had more uh, guys willing to to take the games in their own hands. Kimball McKenzie, for me, he was that guy. Last three minutes of that game, you saw the jeopardy in the game increase. Who's going to step up? It was their point guard. The point guard that's been carrying a heavy load for this team for the last several weeks came up big in the clutch. He certainly did. 25 points, five rebounds, three offensive rebounds as well for Kimball uh, McKenzie. And uh, let's have a look at the second page of stats. Caledonia, 44 points in the paint. And despite all their issues, 39% off, the 39 points off the bench. Although that was partly because of all the issues with their uh, starters. Well, this is the number one and two teams, the points in the paint, and it showed as well. Caledonia only shot three three-pointers at half time. They were really looking to exploit the gaps inside. And I think the lackluster help defense from the Leicester Riders today really you know, energized the Caledonia. Caledonia glad he is in the paint. Well, we've talked about what a great performance Kimball McKenzie had. He is now with Drew. Kimball, you go blow to blow, but when it comes down to it, you do what you do here. Win. Put that win into perspective for us. Yeah, I mean, I just heard the uh, shooting numbers there. Uh, obviously, 30-something percent is very uncharacteristic of us, but... I mean, we're glad to get a win. I know we're going to go back to the drawing board here, watch some film, and uh, we we want to get better. Um, but we're going to we're going to be building into the end of this season and be ready to roll. And offensively, you were the bright spot. And when it got late, it was yourself that made the plays on the offensive end. What was going through your mind? Uh, just trying to win the game, honestly. Um, I, I mean, I think that's all of our focus over here is trying to win the game. It definitely wasn't pretty tonight, uh, but we're glad to be on the on the right side of it tonight. And your defense has been a topic of discussion all season long, but when it came down to it, you got the stops you needed. Yeah, we'd love to be uh, better. We'd love to get better and better, uh, and we, we're going to. Um, so this is a pretty prideful group of guys we got here. I'm glad we got enough stops to get the win tonight. Uh, now back to work. That's a great win. Thanks for your time, Kimball. Thanks. 
Big night for Kimball McKenzie, as it has been the case often this season, Kieran. Some clutch shots in particular. I guess you could say that tonight's performance emphasised that jump up for him from supporting cast member, which has been over the last couple of years, to, to one of the key protagonists. Yeah, I, no, he didn't shoot the ball particularly well, but I thought he did a great job of icing it. You know, the free throw line, 12 of 12 from the free throw line. That, that's big. That's a big time player who likes to get to the basket, can make free throws, can shoot the ball as well. So he wasn't shooting particularly well uh, from the four, uh, one of seven from three, but definitely did a great job of that free throw line. We've got to give credit to Gareth Murray because look at this short stacked Gladiators team because we knew that Ali Fraser was back home. He didn't travel. Tape didn't have any minutes at all because of a day-to-day -day foot injury. Farrell Aliozic ejected, Bailey gone, Onwes out of the game, and yet they took it to the wire. Impressive stuff. I thought the small lineup really kind of flustered uh, the, the Leicester Riders. They, they, they couldn't use their own bigs because they were so the, the Gladiators were so small attacking and shooting the ball better in that second half. So, you know, credit to the Gladiators, they, they fought to the very end. And credit to the Riders because, as we just heard from Kimball McKenzie, not a vintage performance by any stretch of the imagination given their high standards, but they get the win anyway and that I'm sure will please their head coach, Rob Paternostro. He's courtside now with Drew. Rob, at this level, it doesn't matter how you do it, and your guys got it done tonight. Yeah, we did. We came down the stretch and made the plays we needed to. I think that um, in a strange way, all those ejections kind of let them play free and, and awkward. I thought it was really awkward out there for us. Um, took the bigs out of our game, you know, and, and, and that, uh, you know, was different for us. But um, you got to win awkward sometimes, right? And I think that um, tonight was uh, was one of those games. And you've been a player before, and you know from a player's perspective, it's easy to get complacent when you see those ejections. What were you telling your group? Well, I didn't think that was the case with our guys at all. I just thought that um, the game changed. And, you know, you look over there and you look at Sloan and you look at uh, Durham, and they're really difficult to guard. And I thought their penetration – really hurt us and you know they were playing free and easy they knew they weren't coming out they knew that they had the ball and give them credit they, they did a good job that was a really strange one but um hey we'll take it and Kimball McKenzie stepped up late which he has all season long but it was the contribution from your young fella Evan Walsh talk about his resurgence late yeah Evan's a heck of a player you know we've always known that um you know when he's called him on he's going to be ready I thought he made two big free throws uh, those are two big free throws in those situation I thought he, his hustle was big for us but um yeah, you know, uh, hopefully uh, next game we'll play some big guys. Coach, I know you're happy to walk out here with a win. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, as he said, sometimes you got to win ugly. They got it done. And I guess he'll look back at this, take the positives, that on a subpar night for the Riders, they still walk away with a win. And that's, that's the most important thing at the end of the day, you know, finding their way to win. But they have to build on those mistakes. You know, if they, if they want to make a real push in those playoffs, they're going to have to play better basketball. Kimball McKenzie had a big night. Uh, so did Mark Loving, again, one of their big players this season. And tonight he demonstrated why a double-double for him, including 12 boards, 13 points as well. What do you make of his performance tonight? Well, he got off a good start. No shot the ball well, but again, an you know, uncharacteristic shooting game from, from Loving. But the rebounds really helped. Uh, well, well, the left and right win. Defensively as well, I guess he has stole a board from 13 in total. So if Rob Paternostro is going to be frustrated with some of the uh, some of the performance tonight, but happy with the result, I wonder what Gareth Murray will make of that spirited performance from his team. Let's find out. He's with Drew. Coach, as many adjectives I can use to describe your team tonight, how would you sum it up? Ultimate small ball. Ultimate small ball. I mean, we got some injuries. Pat told me before the game he wasn't able to play. Ferro gets kicked out first first half. Uh, we're trying to figure a way how to win games, right? So we're, we're playing small. Fraser Malcolm at the five. We've never seen that before. We've seen Malcolm Murray four five, but we've never seen never seen Malcolm five. So yeah, it was a tough one. Um, I thought the guys played good defense. It was a tough like tough matchup, right? Um, we shared the ball. We gave up some offensive rebounds that really hurt us in the end. And when it rains, it pours. We talked about your road struggles, and you guys get off to a good start, but then you get a guy that fouls out and get ejected. How do you maintain a level of sanity? I didn't. 
I didn't. It's in my head. I mean, I'm going crazy, right? Um, but at the end of the day, I've got to, I've got to say, what, what do these guys need right now? What do they need from me right now? Um, and me going crazy probably doesn't help them. So we got to get through the struggles. Uh, we've got another game tomorrow. So uh, we, we, we lose tonight. But it was, I saw some um, encouraging things from the guys. And just quickly, with one eye on the final, you mentioned it, a game tomorrow in Surrey. Just take us through what the next 24 hours look like for your team. Uh, so we're, hard, we're heading down to Surrey tonight right after the game. We play Surrey 6 p.m. tomorrow tonight. Um, we'll see how injuries are. See ankle, uh, Prince Hunter's ankle. Pharaoh should be back if he doesn't want to foul out again. Uh, so we're just trying to fight through and, and make sure everybody's healthy for the following weekend, the trophy final. Coach, a courageous effort by your men. Job well done. Thank you. I'm pretty sure it's fair to say Pharaoh won't want to foul out uh, tomorrow. It's disappointed for all the fans that came to see him tonight. He had his own fan club in and only saw, what, less than a half of all. I'm, I think I saw him sneak into the crowd and sit with them during the game. So uh, eating some popcorn. <laughs> so, yeah, he'll be he'll be ready to go tomorrow. Uh, no doubt about that. Al Durham will be as well. What a night he had. Standout performer for Caledonia. 22 points, including a 100% clip from the free throw line. And, indeed, that was the very much uh, the story of the night. Both teams prolific clinical from the three throw line. Yeah, and I love the way he attacks the basket. You know, he's scoring an array of ways. Uh, uh, like I said, a great pickup for the Gladiators. Five defensive boards as well. So they'll take a lot from tonight, won't they, given... OK, they've got sorry tomorrow. But looking as we expected, as we talked about at the top of the show, to next Sunday, this could easily, on a different night, have been a blowout. But it wasn't, and that is a big, big performance. And that's the key takeaway, the fight that they had to stay within. It, was, it wasn't a, a, a normal game, per se, but they, they found a way to battle and sticking it to the very end. Given the form they've been in as well, crucial that they put up a spirited performance tonight, and they absolutely did that. Right, what about the rest of the BBL? Eh, well, let's uh, go straight to the second game on that list, which is Newcastle, London, and the Eagles had a double-digit lead at one point, but London clawing their way back one step closer to the title. Elsewhere, Bristol, who have been rolling all season long, blowing out Plymouth, 99-60 the final there, and a key win for Sheffield, who a couple of weeks back were getting sucked in to the uh, bottom edges of the table and being pulled out, maybe of the playoff picture. Well, a Port win for them, 75-70 over Surrey, who surely now are not going to find their way into the postseason confirmation. 84-81, the final here in Leicester. This is what it does to the table then. As I say, London, another win for them on their march to the title. Bristol stay in second. They played four more than Leicester. With that win, the Riders up to an 18-8 and record. Caledonia, they stay in fifth. Uh, 14 and 14, uh, they are locked in for the playoffs. I wonder how high their speed is going to be, but they will take a lot from tonight's performance, as we said. Rest of the action in the BBL. Well, Gareth mentioned that, the game on the road against Surrey tomorrow night, and then they'll turn uh, their attention to the BBL trophy final. Three games for you on Sunday. Plymouth in action against uh, Caledonia's opponents in the final uh, next Sunday, Cheshire. London take on the Sharks and Manchester, the entertaining high-flying Manchester Giants in action as well. We are back next Sunday for the WBBL and BBL Trophy Finals on Sky Sports Action, Sky Sports Mix, and of course YouTube live from the Emirates Arena in Glasgow on air from 12.30 for all the action, all the build-up. Make sure you join us for that one. It'll be a full crew in the house for it. We cannot wait to see you there. Thanks for that. No, 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 no,